Welcome everyone. My name is Bill Rothermel. I'm chairman of the Car Selection Committee and a member of the board of directors here at the AACA Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the sweetest place on earth. Our collection chronicles will tell you about our cars that we have in our collection. And today, the car that you have in front of you is a 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Monza Coupe. 1960 was a very important and a very pivotal year in the automobile industry in Detroit because the manufacturers all announced a compact car. Studebaker actually began in 1959, the year before, with the compact Lark, but 1960 was very important because Chevrolet introduced the Corvair, Ford introduced the Falcon, and Chrysler introduced the Valiant. They were all different in their concept. The Falcon was the first car, and it was a conventional front engine, rear wheel drive car using kind of off the shelf parts from other Ford products. The Valiant was again a conventional front engine, rear wheel drive automobile with some pretty flamboyant styling by Virgil Exner. Then came the Corvair, which was the most like the European automobiles, Volkswagen in particular. Uh, the engine was in the rear of the car. It was an air-cooled engine rather than a water-cooled engine. Trunk in the front, fully independent suspension at all four wheels, and a unitized body, which was also true of the Chrysler and of the Falcon. The unitized body, meaning the body and the frame of the car were all one unit. Uh, this uh, helped to uh, lighten the weight of the car and, of course, add structural integrity. Chevrolet introduced the Corvair to much fanfare. It was very, very successful, extremely popular, and late in the model year, they introduced the Monza. There was a 500 and a 700 and a Monza. The Monza was the new top-of-the-line car, trimmed out a little bit more nicely, but most importantly, it had what was very key to the marketing of the automobile, bucket seats with a floor shift for the uh, transmission very, very popular. The car uh, was built in its first generation from 1960 to 1964. The second generation, like this car, designed by Bill Mitchell, who was head of styling at GM, from 1965 to 1969. What happened along the way, however, was a guy named Ralph Nader. And Ralph Nader was pushing the domestic manufacturers to add more safety into their automobiles. And the Corvair was his target. He wrote a book called Unsafe at Any Speed and basically said that the Corvair was unsafe, it was likely to flip over, and uh, he basically kind of bashed the car, for lack of a better choice of words, and damaged the marketing of the automobile. It was really not unsafe at any speed. The suspension used swing axles in the back, which Mercedes-Benz had been using for years on their cars, never creating an issue. But on the Corvair, he targeted GM, targeted the automobile, and in 64, on the last version of the first generation cars, they uh, fixed the uh, rear of the car with a sway bar, and of course the 65 through 69 cars were redesigned. The 65 and 66 sales were quite good, but by 1967, now you had the Mustang, the Camaro, all kinds of other small cars, small sporty cars, and the market pretty much went away for the car. The last Corvair was built in 1969. Again, this is a 1965 model. It's a Monza. There was a step above added to the Monza, or to the uh, Corvair lineup, I'm sorry, in 1965 called the Corsa which was a more performance-oriented version of the Monza. The air-cooled engine to the rear of this car is 164 cubic inches. It's 140 horsepower. These are very fun to drive cars, great handling cars, very uh, uh, performance-oriented, but not like a muscle car, but a very, very nice performing automobile. I uh, hope you enjoyed this segment, and I hope you enjoyed our 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Monza. Mm -hmm.